All right, all right, all right. Okay, what's going on, y'all? My name is Tobias Rose, and I am the principal and the creative director of this cool place that, uh, that I founded back in college days, back in 2001. Wow. And so now we're doing this whole thing called Conversations. And because we're in the pandemonium, we can't have all you beautiful people here at the office. So we're doing this studio style. And so if you could, before you get into it, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff like I said before on previous episodes. We got to do it for the algorithm. So with all that being said, welcome to another episode of Conversations. This is the podcast and the show that we do bi-weekly, uh, bi-monthly, and on a bi-annual basis all at the same time. Believe me when I say that. And I have a friend of mine that I actually have to change how I talk to her now because we're on camera. <clears throat> and so... I want to introduce to you a person who is also, you're an NCCU alum now, right? I am, Eagle Pride. Eagle Pride, NCCU alum, Rutgers alum. Yes, yeah, Scarlet Knight. Amazing. Has been working with what was formerly known as the East Durham Children's Initiative. Now, it is now known as the Durham Children's Initiative. Because they so dope. <laughs> and she is also, since... 2017, I believe. Is that right? That's correct. Has been a member of our city council. And so I would like to introduce you all to Deidreana Freeman, Thank our you. councilwoman. Thank you. Thank How are you, you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. A little hot, but you know. That's my fault. The it's, weather. It's not just the weather. It's just because we got a bunch of people all the way back there and they just keeping it hot. And we're yeah, trying to separate, you. but bodies just generate heat yes it do. They, so, do. they do so there's a, there's a lot that we could talk about there's a lot that i want to talk to you about we can't do all that on camera okay all right but Thank i you. do wanna, i appreciate it i'm trying to look out okay i'm trying to look out but you are a person who i admire and i love what you're doing on city council um it was very encouraging to hear you when we did that presentation a few years back for the bond yeah. for the, uh, the housing bond and you have been a voice of reason in Durham politics. I'll say it like that. I try. All Just right? listen to the people. Thank you. Thank you. What drew you to politics? Because Oof. I have been asked to do things and I tell them absolutely not. But what made you decide to take that, that leap and do this? Because when we say public service, it really is public service. You it are putting is. a lot it of time is. out there. It is. So tell me what made you decide to go on this, this route? It's interesting. I think, you know, for any woman in politics, they say that you got to ask them at least seven times, yeah. whereas some men you could just ask once uh, or not at all. Yeah. I definitely was probably asked 21 times. And I, I really had to figure it out. Like, I was getting involved in a lot of uh, cases, mm -hmm. planning zoning cases, uh, working with the uh, DOT, state and federal, trying to figure out how to keep a grocery store in the neighborhood. And it just kept kind of building up and building up. And when the votes weren't going the way I liked, it just made sense. So yeah. if I could be the one making the vote, mm -hmm. then who could I be upset with? And in your, your specific ward, you do have some food desert. So you, you, you still have some food deserts. And right? food swamps. Goodness gracious. Yes. So can you talk a bit about <clears throat> what that is, what a food desert is, or what a food swamp is? So the food desert is where in the community you don't have access to healthy foods. Mm -hmm. And um, with the food swamp is where you have access to the unhealthy foods. Mm -hmm. And so we know that there's not, it, there's, no, there's not a case where there's no food available. There is food available. Mm -hmm. The food may not be the healthiest. And so you get a lot of fast food and not a lot of, you know, the healthier green yeah. vegetables and, you know, carrots, mm -hmm. celery, all that good stuff. So, What's your motivation? What was your motivation to go and dig into that when you realize something's wrong? I think what motivates me most is my children and the children in my community, which is why I work with Durham Children's mm -hmm. Initiative. I definitely could see how just a few slight changes, shifts in how we did things could be a huge benefit to the kids. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said before, with the grocery store in the neighborhood, that one shift, that one conversation led to a number of other conversations and actually changed the way they ran the road down 55. And so wow. they moved it over a few hundred feet. 
the actual road itself is now, now you see that edge yeah that's because they didn't that was plan it they didn't I mean, plan it that way <laughs> 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 they didn't plan it that way that's what 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 happened but you know wow. they start they start the conversation like well what color do you want us to paint this car Seriously. <laughs> they don't ask you if you want the car they don't ask you what kind of car they just start off in the middle of the conversation so what was the most surprising thing to you in terms of just that decision making process once you got on city council if i'm honest how many white men were involved wow and not a lot of black women not a lot of brown women mm -hmm. not even a lot of black men in durham yes so even so we had a black mayor we had black like heads of departments but when you went to like transportation meetings mm -hmm. It's a whole bunch of white people. And then I'd be like, this this is off. Did you talk to anybody in the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Like, you do realize there's a bus stop there. And you would be disrupting a whole, like, apartment complex. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to anybody in that apartment complex? And so it just kind of kept building on itself. And people kept asking me to come to more meetings and mm -hmm. ask those types of questions. Mm -hmm. I've noticed you do that, too, um, which I love. <laughs> and I, I use that in some of the work that I do. But a lot of times I'll say, well, did you... Think about the people that are actually there. Yeah. That's one of the first things. That's like the fundamental thing. We're getting ready to run a whole railroad through this neighborhood. Yes. Do you did you talk to that person that actually lives there where Bring you Bring a whole bike trail through it. Right. Yeah. I, I appreciate that about you. Um I, I I do need to get straight into the pandemic though. Go right in. You're on city council. And I know you guys got a lot of flack because of the the stay at home orders and a lot of other things that I understand you were doing to try to keep us safe. Um, but can you walk me through 2017, 2018, 2019, and you get to 2020? Yes. That changes the whole game. It did. Um, being on city council, having to make decisions. And then I also remember that was right after some other things that happened, like, you know, with McDougal Terrace, uh, and, and the family and the people over there. Yes. Um, what was that like being a public official? It was horrible. It was. It was. I can remember the first phone call to say, well, what should we do? And I was grateful that Steve was going to take the lead on it because mm -hmm. as a mayor, he could he could write the emergency order right. immediately by himself without the council. And that's what he that's did. The the one, that's the one thing that the mayor does get to do by those is emergency orders. And it was it was almost like a, a relief because no one knew what it was yeah. they were talking about we don't know how long the the spit will stay in the air and we don't know if you touch the table if yeah. you'll be sick and it was like it was kids were still in school it was all awful and i i think there was a deepak show steve would tell tells the story uh steve Schul, the mayor yeah. now tells the story and he says you know he realized like they were going to have this show and it was going to be a super spreader and so just just making that call was easy. But the follow up, the kind of like now that everything's shut down and the system is like the entire ecosystem of this city is shut down. How are we going to manage? Because folks got to make money right. and they got to be able to feed themselves, clothe themselves, like train, like get back and forth to work. And that's where it really got hairy. I think I was. I think I, I, I could definitely recall being on the phone like all day, every day with questions, all day, every day with questions from residents and to staff, like just going back and forth, back and forth, trying to make sure people understood what was happening, how it was happening, what what was the priority, why we needed to do it this way, what we could shift, what we could change, what the laws were around it. Yeah. And then the coordination with the county as well was important in making sure that as our public health arm in the city and the county had to be at the table and yeah i was grateful that our new health director stepped up rodney was great yeah he did yeah so mr rodney jake thank you thank rodney you rodney jenkins because i know you went through a lot rodney mm. a lot he was he was like brand new yeah. this is the first i don't even think he met anyone in person no <laughs> i just know like of months. rodney right yeah um wow so that's a lot of the stuff that people don't really talk about. When you're in that position, um, it sounds to me like you really are kind of that conduit. You are that person that a lot of things are going through. Yes. And that's something that I don't think the public really knows. And I, and I have to say, like, I am naturally a connector. Yeah. So I play that role in many different ways in my family, at work, mm -hmm. and in the community. And so 
it just was natural to make sure that the people who weren't online, the people who were picking up the phone and calling, I needed to give them the most attention yeah. because they weren't on the internet. They weren't using the internet to find the information and I wanted to make sure that they had that. Can you talk a bit about what your ward is? And I think a lot of people don't understand the concept of wards, but can you tell us geographically what ward you represent and, and what that means? Sure, sure. Let me take a step back and, and give you the like, yeah. the writ response. And is the that reason why I asked that is because <laughs> what you just said, you were talking about how people needed to get these things and, and it made me think about your ward. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, she's really thinking about her people so yes, yes, yeah yeah so specifically the wards there's three wards in durham one two and three and i'm ward one and ward one goes straight up guest road so to speak and it's off to the right mm -hmm. to the left is ward three um it goes all the way up to as north as northern high school and then comes back down and around in some very funky ways around some annex sections of the county and then in back into uh, downtown, right about Avondale, mm -hmm. um, coming down and around. I, and I go all the way, my, this word goes all the way down to Central. Yeah. And it encapsulates Central specifically. And I think it was designed that way to make sure that all of North Carolina Central was inside of it. Um, I will say that there are parts, so because of East Campus, parts of Duke is also inside the ward and all of downtown. Mm -hmm. And so I represent the entire city because we have an at-large system. It's nonpartisan. It doesn't matter what party you're in or are not in, mm -hmm. even though it's still Durham. Um, but I have to live inside of that ward. Right. So the ward only matters if you want to run. Okay. okay. If you're not running, and you're looking for representation or trying to figure out who you should call, you should call all of us. We are all your representatives. And I treat everyone um, as if, you know, they're in my ward. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say is because a lot of the lower wealth communities have, have been like, happen to be in Ward 1, mm -hmm. especially around, you know, Liberty Street, which has been halfway emptied out. Because um, of the apartments getting ready to be yes 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 and some of the other areas oxford manor um and i don't think yeah corn wallace is in ward two but uh and so and hoover road is in ward two but i try to keep an eye on all of those areas because they're often overlooked yeah. and just acknowledging like it's impossible it's impossible for me to keep up with what's going on mm -hmm. i can't even imagine you know with kids at home and life like you know, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, uh, a shooting the other day, like yeah. all the things that could happen. Trying to keep up with what's happening on council is is not a top priority and I can understand why. Mm -hmm. But I wanna make sure that it's accessible. So if you do have a question, if you have any any anything that you want to make sure um, is getting done, done. Like if you wanna offer feedback, I wanna be accessible. Mm -hmm. It is not, um, it is not always by email or by internet. And so I'm likely to be the one of few who are walking the streets, like actually out in the community. And yeah. so I've been, to, I've been to every single one of the developments in our city. Yeah. I've been to many of the neighborhoods that people said, where well, you know, you shouldn't be over there. I live in East Durham and in Golden Belt, which is one of the transitioning, you know, gentrified neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first moved there, it was interesting. When did you move there? You? In 2007. Okay, yeah. Prior to Golden Belt coming yeah. online. Well, it was kind of gold. Well, that was around the time Scientific Properties. It was properties. still, but no, it was before Scientific Properties even purchased. They had um, an agreement going. They uh, didn't purchase it yet. And oh, so they still okay, had it okay. fenced up. Yeah. And I can remember there were a lot of folks hanging out around wow. there. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. old Durham. Yeah, That's yeah. It was Durham. also the, the, the line... I was told it was the gang line between um, one side and the other, right there on on Elm Street, and mm -hmm. so it was it was a lot of shootings. Yeah, there were a lot of shootings. Yeah. There was a lot happening. Wow. So what keeps you going through this 2020 that we went through? If I were you, I'd like, man, I'm done. Good. <laughs> Y'all can have it. Y'all can do the politics. I'm gonna be doing something else. But we had a whole pandemic. We're still in the pandemic. 
But what's making you decide to do this again? I, I told you I wasn't going to really get into you running again, yeah, but I, I do know, want... But I mean, it's a real question. Like, wh what's making you decide to go through this again? Honestly, when I look at what, what I set out to do, I lost 2020. Mm -hmm. And I still need to get some of these things done. And I, I don't think... a lot think, of us lost 2020. Yeah, well, I don't think a lot of it... I don't, here's the thing. I have a very different out-of-the-box way of thinking. And sometimes it's not as simple to just put it on paper right. because it's about people and the relationships that I have and actually how you meet folks where they are. And so I'm mindful that if I weren't on council, there's a lot of folks who probably would feel like less engaged. Uh, yeah. And so those are the people who kept pushing me, calling, emailing and checking to see if I was gonna run again. I can remember this one person, uh, Miss Jackie Wagstaff, a former council member. Jackie, that's who my boss. Immediately, my, 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 my. oh my gosh, immediately after, I think it was after um, Biden was elected, yeah. she put my poster on her page. It was almost like a, like a call in, like call and response, like, okay, the next race, it's time for you to run. I'm like, dude, can we have a conversation first? That's a whole Jackie Wagstaff move. No, the conversation was had when she posted it on the internet. That, that was a conversation. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I but uh, I mean, I'm grateful for the support. I am always like honored to be the one mm -hmm. who can like have those conversations with people in very different spaces. Right. I mean, across the board. And so I will also add in this ward, it's important to note that there's a lot of green space mm -hmm. that is disappearing quickly very quickly and yeah. so just noting like we can't say we're talking about climate change and we're developing the hell out of every speed every every piece of land prop possible mm -hmm. so yeah so I want to go back to the pan pandemic and and talk more about things from your perspective um, how was it how different was it to run a city um, when you all are or you know, you're apart, you're not in the same place. You can't really govern in the yeah. same place. Well, I'll be very clear that we, as a council, do not run this city, thank God. Uh, actually, the city manager does. And so Tom Bonfield held the rings oh, really well Tom until he retired. It. Tom crushed it. Yeah, yeah. He's a super, and, uh, he's superhero Tom. He is yes. superhero. Yes, Yeah. He's so much of a superhero, he trained his team up to mm -hmm. take over once he was gone, and they've been rocking ever since. So when Wanda took over, mm -hmm. I was ready. I was ready for the Wanda vision. And, you know, I'm, all bo I'm on board, like, immediately, like, go. Yeah. And I can say that I've not had any, any problems mm -hmm. reaching, reaching staff or getting answers mm -hmm. or finding solutions. Mm -hmm. The one thing that's, that's troubling me now is with the 911 call center, especially with COVID and the pandemic and all of the things, so. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about that and the, the response time and how bad it is. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I know some of the work, I'm not even gonna get too political because I know some of the work you've been doing around that and yeah. I know what direction we could go into, but let's just say we need a little more support and, and those types of things are telling. Yeah, yeah. I wanna be really clear, like we lost a really great police chief Yes, we uh, did. She was really trying. I mean, the president sat down with her and asked her what she thought for over an hour. The president of the United States asked the former Durham police chief. Okay. Yeah. That's that's CJ. what we yeah. that's what we yeah. lost. We lost and, her. Yeah. And she was the president, I think, of Noble. Yes. The the National Organization of Law of Black Law Enforcement. Okay. Exactly. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just gonna say okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's yeah. go with that. Let's go. With that. <laughs> so, but yeah. So, so I don't think that. I've ever been around so many, like, so many people in law enforcement. I went down there to see her installation. Something. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In Memphis? Was it Memphis? No, it was in New Orleans. How are we gonna pass that up? New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Oh, for Noble. Yes. For oh, Noble. oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't pass that up either. If I yeah. Didn't know I would have been there for her in Memphis, but um, it was the same day as the twins' birthday. You got to so, do what you got to do. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So you've, we've gone through, we're going through all that, but is there anything that came out of what you all are doing that is different? Is there a different way that you've been conducting business? Of course. I mean, we're online now. Okay. Everything's mobile and virtual. All the Zoom meetings before, it was like I'd have to get an excused absence. Now I'm gonna have a whole phone conversation and be making decisions mm -hmm. about what happens with the dollars in the city. Yeah, it's completely different, and 
every everyone's out of the office. Uh -huh. You know, I think more. That is a negative, actually. That's that can be kind of a negative, but yeah. but it's it's. I mean, it's it's still doable. Mm -hmm. City is operating. How is it different? Contracts are happening. With with doing it, you know, remotely. What's what's different? Does, I know you just alluded oh, to I not having my, connections. I wear my sweatpants. Boom boom. While we have the meeting and and just. You know. Reasons why I won't run for public office because I would do it anyway. <laughs> Tobias, you never dress up. I, I know <laughs> it's my thing. So yeah. So is that you think the way? Is that the new way? Do you think of doing business? Do you think this is going to be something that you all are going to be doing? I hope so. I mean, I think the 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 greater access to the folks to folks in the community mm -hmm. to be on the call. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially with, with our work session at one o'clock in the afternoon yeah. and you'd had to come to the building and find a parking spot. I won't go there. But um, I mean, I'm right across the street when I need to go to the work session. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, other people have had issues. I've yeah, seen yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so just just noting like you can just hop on a Zoom or mm -hmm. check out Facebook and mm -hmm. still be right there raising your hand and getting your questions answered. I got a, a crazy question for you. What was the turning point for you where you got so interested, not when you wanted to run, we already talked about that, but you got interested in politics. <laughs> what was I'm it that happened? I'm still not interested in politics, <laughs> let's be clear. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm interested in solving problems. You, you, I, somebody's um, asked you this question already. No, and you I, I mean, you already had, that was perfect. It, but it's serious, it's just, <laughs> it's just, I can't stand the politics. The politics is nasty, nah, it's it disgusting. Yeah, it is. But, the so the problem solving is where is I'm I'm here for that. Yeah. I'm always here for that. So and if we can figure thing. it out, we figure it out. If we can't, let's move on. The people that's the thing about Durham. The people they draw you in. And it's like oh man, I love y'all. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. gosh. All right, I'm gonna do it again. So the thing that I I'm, I'm really curious about. The reason why I ask you that question is we have issues. I think with younger people getting engaged in politics, local politics. Yes. Um, they see things on TV. And the thing that I told, uh, I don't know if it was Steve, but I told someone this, I said, when you look at local politics, you see stuff on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, you see it everywhere. Local politics may be on the news at six o'clock, maybe. Maybe. We don't have a, a lot of coverage, and so a lot of younger people just don't know what's going on. So. What kind of things do you think could be done to get, especially Gen Z, engaged in politics and to understand that this is an opportunity to make changes with your vote mm -hmm. um, that happen on a local level, things that you can actually see? What, what does that look like and what did that look like for you? I mean, th there's a lot in there to cover. But I, I would say that the, the first thing is getting, getting as many younger folks involved because that's who's going to plan my retirement. Right. Like what, what's gonna happen here in this country is gonna be the, the, my kids, other people's kids. Mm -hmm. Like those are the people that we have to rely on. It, the earlier that they get engaged, the better. The more they have wherewithal the where, the, to, to navigate. I mean, I can remember watching, uh, there was a meeting mm -hmm. and just knowing how to navigate Robert's rules of order yeah it's such a it's a huge skill oh my gosh and Motions. second you'd be surprised how quickly you could make some changes anyway oh i'm not surprised I, we use them in some of the other organizations i'm in okay and when we use robert's rules of order things happen so quickly so quickly <laughs> you know but when you don't Let's have another meeting next week to talk about the things we didn't cover today. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, I would say that the the way that you get younger folks involved is really through just letting them make the decisions mm -hmm. and letting it fail if it needs to fail. We don't have to save everybody. Mm -hmm. we, don't have to sa we don't have to win every fight. We can actually let folks learn on their own. And it's mm -hmm. okay. It's all right. Which is why I don't, I don't begrudge folks their mm -hmm. bumper stickers. All of the different policy ideas. Hey, we can we can work with some of them. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and take it over here and figure out how to make sure it works. Right, right. I right. want to actually figure out how we have evidence from a pol like from the pilot that actually says that this is what we should do. Right, right. So I don't I don't think it's the problem of coming up with the ideas. Mm -hmm. The implementation. I think there's there's some things there, but the. To, in order to get more of the young folks involved, I think the city's done a really good job with our youth engagement 
with our Office on Youth. Mm -hmm. And so the shifts and changes that have been made in that one department or one new department actually has, I mean, everyone's talking about the booklet on council, not everywhere, but on council, everyone's talking about this youth in power, like enlightenment. They've been doing listening sessions all around the city, yeah. talking, to, talking to each other about what they want and how it should work. This has to happen. This ha we have to do this now so that, so that we have it for the future. Wow. So this is a dope idea. Is this something other cities are doing? I mean, I think what we had before was more like what other cities were doing. Okay. Where you have like a board and they operate and they do projects. Okay. And they're like off on the side. This brought them full, full, full front and center and made sure that they were involved. Like we're doing this whole comprehensive planning mm -hmm. about where, land, like where, what land should look like for different areas across the city. Mm -hmm. They were involved in, in the engaged Durham model. Like they were attending those meetings, doing the surveys, they were talking to folks, they were asking questions, they were developing questions. Mm -hmm. And so I think the more that they're engaged, the more, more buy-in you have. And mm -hmm. so the participatory budgeting even, yeah. With, with being able to vote as young as 13 years old. I know some folks will complain about that. But I think it's important that you start early in the habit of making sure you know like your vote will matter. Mm -hmm. And the more that your vote matters, the more you'll do it. Mm -hmm. I know my votes matter. That's why I go to the meetings and I cast my votes. Uh, yours absolutely matter for a lot of things. Yeah, so, 530 so. million of them. Yeah, a lot, yeah. yeah. Five <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, wow, that's amazing. What have you guys learned? Now, you, you're conducting business through Zoom. Yes. What kind of things do you think you picked up through this whole thing that you will still implement after the pandemic is over as a city? I mean, from Parks and Rec, even just being able to offer Zoom classes versus they doing that the in-person. No. Wow. No, no, no. And um, I think even the way you pay your water bill now, it's it's just everything is different. We're not going back. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back. Mm -hmm. I want to move forward and I want to do things in very new and innovative ways that actually honors what we've learned over this last few years, especially in the pandemic. What uh, what is going to be different for cities? And I want to just speculate. I want to go into the future. You know, let's 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 imagine things. Let's. What is different with the way cities as a whole will run after this? What kind of things are, are they gonna have to look out for? Or, or, or what, what kind of benefits, what kind of good things are coming out of this as well? I mean, I think the, the whole vaccine equity piece where you saw like front and center with all the well-intentioned people around the table that 70% of those who got vaccinated were white. Yeah. It's really clear how race equity matters. It's really clear how we've got to create systems that address everyone's needs. Mm -hmm. I think we'll have that coming out of the pandemic. And I mean, for the cities that learn from it, they'll continue to grow. From mm -hmm. the ones that don't, they'll definitely won't continue to grow. They'll uh, likely shut down. But, but I mean, I'm watching as other cities across the, or cities, towns, and villages, mm -hmm. there's some villages that have lost a lot of their population yeah. because they didn't handle it well. People don't want to be where they're not safe, right. which is why public safety matters. That's true. Yeah. I heard you. Yeah. I know why you threw that in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're in this place now where equity is a big part of the conversation now. Yes. Especially after George Floyd. And I hate that that happened. I hate, you know, when I woke up that morning, I was like, again? And that's the key thing is, is to note that it's, this is the first time it's ever been filmed. Yeah. You know that it's happened before. I know that it's happened before. You've heard the stories. And you've but, probably even seen a I've couple seen of it. incidents that led you to, to understand like this, this type of unchecked I'm, power. I've been a part of some of them. Mm. And, you know, I've, I've been in situations where I've gotten pulled over and I, the cop was like, let me search your car. Let me do all these things. I'm like, what did I do mm -hmm. as a kid? Mm -hmm. You know, and being at a grocery store, excuse me, a uh, gas station one night and everyone in the gas station came out to watch because the police officer, he was just accosting me, telling me, yeah, I know you got drugs on you and, and everything. Like, dude, I don't do drugs. Um, so I've been there and I understand that that piece of it. Uh, but 
But when we talk about equity and we talk about these different things that are happening, we've seen it through the vaccine. Um, what are ways that you think cities need to, what, what are things that they need to implement in order to be equitable in more of their decision making? Oh, definitely. There are some very key pieces, and I don't want to get too political. Tell me, let's do it. Let's go. But what I'm time just going to oh, say. What, let me see what kind of time we got. 30 minutes. Let's go. Come I on. I just want to say that, that the first thing that could be done is to actually put some money to that conversation around equity. Yep. You know that the equity conversation is based on inequities, mm -hmm. and those inequities are usually laden or based in race. Mm -hmm. And so if we start there with this, with this work with money, mm -hmm. that actually would transform lives and close that wealth gap. I know Dr. Darity and Kirsten Mullen talk about you know, reparations and yeah. the work that needs to happen around that. But locally, we have work to do to make sure that children are covered from birth, mm -hmm. a baby bond. Mm -hmm. um, you know, work to do to make sure that our youth have opportunities. I mean, every single child coming out of Durham Public Schools can go to Durham Tech for two years. I didn't know that. For free. I had no I'm idea. Sorry, for free. Come on. But that's on the county's dime. The city's not ponied up yet, but we can. I had no idea. We can develop the programs that actually put them to work. And I mean, just full transparency, my husband went through the Brownsfield training and I watched this happen already. So mm -hmm. it's not something I made up like I'm some, you know, in, 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 ingenuitive genius. No, it's all, it's it's all just good. All, I called you Evans early. Don't feel bad. Yeah, it's, just, it's just all what happens. <laughs> so it's already it's already a process in place to do it. Use it. Yeah. So they paid for him to be an employee of the business of the corporation or company that he works for now for the first six months after he was trained. That's amazing. We could do that for at least five to ten kids. We to start, more, right? We, to start, right? At yeah. least start the process and move it, move it to the, to the point where they're they actually have work experience. Mm -hmm. And so, we got a lot of new companies coming. We do, and that's where I was. You know, that's where I was about to go. We got a lot of new companies, and, and you know, smaller companies will follow. So let's make sure that some of the kids here are starting their own companies. Let's make sure that they have mm -hmm. the funds to do that, mm -hmm. and and that's not just limited by race. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it for every kid, but I do think that we need to be specific and intentional about for black kids based on the history of this country. Based on the disparities currently. And if I go even further, it's black males. Yeah, so. Yeah, um, yeah. I know uh, there's, that's just one like piece mm -hmm. that could be done around the equity. Mm -hmm. There's so many others. When you put that race equity lens on transportation, when you put it on you know, sustainability around energy efficiencies, around uh, even even the way we hire people mm -hmm. in HR. They're, I want to be clear: fair and equal are not equitable. Right. For for every every time that you've tried to balance the scale, where race is concerned, black folks have lost. I know. That's consistent. And if I go any further, indigenous have lost even more because yes. there's like, almost like non-existent. But it's important that we take the time now that we have the knowledge to move us in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really excited, I have to say. I, I'm really, really excited because the race equity team brought forward all these recommendations. And look who's running for mayor. It's timely. I saw that. I noticed that. I was like, wow. It's timely. It's, a, it's like... Wow. Time is now. Wow. Time is now. We got to do this. You can't ignore that. No. You can't ignore you it. Cannot. So. It's kismet. Do you think that that is just equity is something that every city, and and you know you said an equity lens, but is that a priority that that you feel every city should have? Going I mean, forward? if you want your city to be diverse, and productive and efficient, yes. I mean, I started with the policy link conversation mm -hmm. in my first campaign and people kept saying, you can't use this language. It's too many words. And I kept saying, but guess what? If I explain it enough, people will start to understand. Right. And they do. And so if you understand that if you have diversity, if you actually have diversity of thought, of diversity of, a, of experience, of mm -hmm. lived experience, you get the best out of what you produce. I agree. It doesn't mean you make everything all one mm -hmm. or the other. It doesn't mean that you 
piecing whoever will come to the table. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional about it. So if you know you need someone of color who has a graphics background, then you go out and you look for that. Right. And if you don't find it, you go out and look for it again. And if you don't find you go out and you look for it again. I've been and we've re-advertised enough times around board seats that I know that we could do the same thing around contracts, mm -hmm. suppliers, mm -hmm. like all of the others. If people know that the the gap is there and they, they'll fill it. What are your thoughts on the reparations like what Asheville did? Oh, that was a mess. I thought the same. I just I mean, wanted to I hear it from I want to be really someone. clear that reparations paid to white folks is wrong. Yeah. Okay. Because it hasn't been paid to, all of, and a mule. to all of the people who, who are the descendants yes. of enslaved people yet. Right. It's coming though. It's coming. It's coming. I have no hope. Yeah. That's just me. I mean, and that's just because of the years of just watching and just like, yeah. It's just so good. Well, we don't need everyone to stand by and wait. We need everyone to get to work while some of us who were in the trenches continue to do what we need to do to get that done. What does that work look like? It looks like documenting the history, the mm -hmm. context. It looks like um, actually writing the policy. It mm -hmm. looks like actually, actually like being the spokesperson. And I don't want to be that spokesperson. Come on, you already there. I don't want to be the spokesperson, but I want to support the spokesperson in doing this work. But I, I do want to say that it's, it's a lot of what I do in the church mm -hmm. right now with um, a faith community because Episcopalians have benefited over, like hand over foot and mm -hmm. like, like just repeatedly on slave labor and it is now time for atonement mm -hmm. and they've been trying to find the ways i'm on a national on, well i'm on a state um restitution committee and i'm on a national um moravian and episcopal coordinating committee and wow. we're having those conversations so even though you've lost hope i'm still going to work on it that's what i need <laughs> i need you to do that come on that's what i'm talking about um I love to hear that because when it when it went down the first time when it happened with Asheville and that's no no knock against Asheville but when it happened I was just like word yeah it's the same it's thing what? happened in Evanston Illinois mm -hmm. and I try to work with one of the council members there to try and help them shift it because if you just pay twenty five thousand dollars to property owners of color that is not reparations not at all okay not at all you did not repair any bit of the harm you didn't go and do your research. Nope. You don't know what's really going on. Nope. And so this is where we are. Yes. You said you gave us reparations. Okay. But this is all about understanding history. Mm -hmm. This is about documenting history. Mm -hmm. And it would be great if out of it came a Durham History Museum that mm -hmm. actually could fit all of us in it. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's just so disrespectful. <laughs> It's just so disrespectful. It's very small. I know when they asked me to serve on the board, I was like, no way. Yeah. I'm not. That is that is so disrespectful. It's, but, you know, I, I can understand what they're trying to do. But again, Durham as a whole, I love when people come out and they start asking me questions. I feel like a historian. Like, oh, let me tell you the story. <laughs> you want to know about Black Wall Street? I can give you the Black Wall Street story. It's just so rich. Um, Durham in itself, all the stories, the historic stories, the business stories alone oh my gosh. could be in a museum. The Duke family, oh Black gosh. Wall Street. We can go to RTP. That's another thing. Um, but that's a good All segue. All black farmers who lost their land. And yeah. then that happened, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that did happen. Yeah, it, it happened. I will, say, I will say the same thing for Golden Belt. So the reason that I got really involved yeah. was my neighborhood... Um, we were losing, we were losing uh, the battle like on gentrification yeah. and just recognizing like if we're going to lose, I wanted my neighbors to be able to lose and walk away with something in their pockets. Good. And so we actually, me and my husband both work with our community neighbors all around the city to uh, develop the National Historic District. I mean, well, the National Historic Registry was already there. We yeah. just had to make it a city. Oh. historic district and so we worked to do that which meant documenting the history so i know julius carr you know yeah. he set up that that whole development from his own pockets okay i want you to think about where that do where those dollars came from but a lot of people don't think about that needless to say in that same vein he also was ripping off a whole bunch of of his employees who were not of color 
you know Julian Carr, he also gave a lot of money for Black Wall Street to even happen. Yeah. You know, um, he gave a lot of that money. A lot of people like, well, he gave money to black people. That's because he said, y'all stay over there. Mm -hmm. That was the whole point. You know, it's, it's a complicated, actually, it's not that complicated. It's really not that complicated. But when you really start to hear that story, it pisses you off. I know it pissed me off. His name is, Carborough is named after him. Yeah. You know, but, but again, it's a part of our history. It's not something we should shy away from. I think it's something that we need to know. Yes. Um, what does the future look like? This is where I was going to go early before you messed me up. But oh, sorry, sorry, No, sorry. it's good. It's cool. It's cool. But <laughs> you had me thinking. I was like, whoa, that's deep. But, you know, we talked about the history of Durham. And we've talked about the pandemic. And we even talked a little bit about some of the things you could take away from this pandemic. But I always have a hard time trying to visualize what Durham would look like in 2040. Mm. And part of the reason why I have that issue is because I got here in 1999 and I remember what Durham looked like in 1999. And then when I graduated from Central, I remember what Durham looked like. Mm. Um, it has changed. It has evolved so much that if you were to go in a time machine and bring somebody from 1999 and sit them here in 2021 and say, hey, you're still in the same city, they would say, no, you're not. Yeah. We're not in Durham. Yeah. So 2030, 2040, 50, what is it going to look like in the future, especially if we adopt more equitable practices and doing uh, and serving the public? I think it looks great, honestly. I think we're going up. You'll see a whole lot more up in the air. Mm -hmm. You'll see a whole lot of public transportation. Mm and different forms. Mm -hmm. I know uh, a lot of the regional planning is still happening, but we still need to prioritize what we do here in this mm -hmm. city. The, the way we use land right now is my one area of concern. I can see that. Because uh, I wanna be clear, like Flint didn't just happen in one administration. Yeah. It took a number of administrations to get there. And so if you spend the money any way in every way, mm -hmm. those projects that need to happen that actually protect the water or clean the water or you know move the water, they don't move forward. Yeah. And the next thing you know, there's a whole bunch of rust in your water and you can't drink it. Right, right. What are we gonna do without water? And so I'm mindful that, that 20, 2030 and 2040 and 2050 mm -hmm. and 2060 and 2070 look really different if we do things a little bit differently right now. Mm -hmm. but with the equity piece, we're on the right track. Y'all have y'all have more people that, around the table who are invested in what happens next. Yeah. You'll have more, more youth involved. You'll have more diversity. You'll have more engagement. And mm. I mean, with all of that, those companies coming, they're gonna meet a different city. They're not gonna meet San Francisco. Yeah. They're not gonna meet Los Angeles. They're meeting Durham. All right, hold on. Let me They're add. meeting the You give me hype. You give me hype, but you give me hype. <laughs> and I needed to hear this. I really like this is therapy. You don't understand how much therapy this is for me to hear you so hopeful. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I go back to is, all right, let's say we get light rail. Let's we get a rail. We don't know what kind of rail. Let's just say a we rail. We don't get commuter rail. It's gonna come. Not right now. Not right now. I know that's in the plan, but let's say we get commuter rail. We get that. That happens. Other things are going to happen as a product of that commuter rail. Yes. Other businesses are going to be relocating. They're going to be trying to build around the rail. Things like that are going to happen. Um, as we think about this brave new future, what does that look like when we do start attracting all those people to see? I mean, they're already coming to Durham. So, yeah. Oh, man, Durham is dope. I can afford to live in Durham while Durhamites are saying, I can't afford to live in Durham anymore. Yes. So what does that look like i mean i think there's two pieces to that because i i also try to work across the state with the municipal with my municipal counterparts yeah and so knowing that like water it knows no boundaries mm -hmm. we have to think about what what regional planning looks like and we have to figure out how we connect and what what services are provided where mm -hmm. everyone does not need to be the creative capital right. of the triangle like like Durham. some folks need to be the the, you know, the manufacturing areas. Some folks need to be the the distribution areas. Yeah. Some folks, like we need all of those pieces to work in tandem. Right now, it's a little discombobulated. On the flip side of that, all of those areas that I mentioned mm -hmm. are jobs. Those jobs 
the more access that we give the people who do live here and the people who used to live here, mm -hmm. the better able they'll be able to afford whatever the prices are. We cannot stop the prices. We're not going to stop the market. No. It's not going to shift and change in the next 20 years. Yeah. I don't care what people say. It's going to do what it's going to do. We can make sure that we close the income inequality by making sure reparations are in place. We can, cl we can close income inequality by making sure that people have access to ownership mm -hmm. of property and business, like in actual income generating businesses. Yeah. And all of that happens at the municipal level with the decisions we make at those council meetings every single month, twice a month. First and third, third, first and third Mondays of the month, we're making we're making decisions on contracts that are in the millions of dollars. I've seen it. Fifty million dollars one night. Just say yes. I've seen that happen. And I was just like, wait, did that just happen? Yep. Yeah. One, one, one. Just one of those contracts in there. The supplier diversity that shifts and changes. The conversations that the mayor and uh, that I I appreciate him taking my my prompts and mm. using them. To, to actually have the conversation with his counterparts because he's a white man. It comes off very different from a white man saying, what does your diversity look like? That's why allies are so important. Exactly. And so as we continue to ask businesses that want our tax dollars, what their diversity looks like, mm -hmm. I, think we, I, don't, I think we only get better. I, I, I'm glad to hear you say that. We were actually talking about that before we started production about just you know, picking people and being able to say no to a job. And sometimes it's because, and I, I'm speaking for complex, because of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, they just didn't have it together. It didn't feel right. Um, I've got a lot of ladies that work here at complex. You've given me some chauvinistic uh, vibes. So we, we have to call that stuff out, recognize it and move on. Yeah. I mean, we, we have to recognize it though. We have to call these people out. Um, protect each other, that's super important. I mean, you've seen what happened with the, I think there was a movie like The Blonde and Bombshell or something. Mm -hmm. That culture has been around since the beginning of the United States, yeah. probably prior, prior to. But the only way we change it is by changing. And so as you, as you continue to turn those organizations down, other folks will start to turn them down. Like it, it becomes like a wave, a ripple. Mm -hmm. And you, the ripple to the wave, you just continue to keep pushing. And as soon you get the new wave in, and those are businesses you want to do the business with. See, now you got me hyped. This is why you're running right now. I see. <laughs> I see. Your talk game is kind of crazy. We never talked on this level right here. So it's like, okay, you get me hyped. You got something else, somebody else hyped too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think, actually, I think we're, we're actually close to you going to another meeting yeah it looks like yes so, i do have another meeting uh Adrian, i don't want to hold you up too much but thank you so so much for talking with me thank you and we got to do this again thank we don't you. have to be on thank camera you. we thank just got to do this definitely, again definitely definitely um i appreciate you making the space and the time available yeah it is it's important it, it this is this is definitely the work i want to do mm -hmm. right now and i'm going to do it in or out of office i say that all the time in or out of office. And I believe you. It does I actually not do matter. You. But I do want to say it, it's a whole lot easier in office than it is out. Well, we need good people in office yeah. that can make things happen. Um, and I think, again, that's the reason why it's so important for young people to, to understand what's going on in local politics. That's right. I feel like national politics is more political theater. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of political theater. They're doing a lot of things to get you, to make you mad or to, to just get you hyped. They're going to keep showing this, this video of the people trying, same to, trying video. to go. <laughs> you know, they're getting on the plane. Yes. Everybody's trying to get on the yeah. plane. This is the same video <laughs> from Tuesday. You know, but, but the thing that upset me like last year when um, the guy was still in office was that was going on nationally, but like I'll go back, the McDougal Terror situation was happening. Yes. And I was constantly educating people. Do you know what's going on? Mm -hmm. Didn't you have something to do with it? No, this is a different issue. But during that, that meeting, remember when we were talking about the maintenance issues? Yeah, well. Well, this is, this is yeah. a good point that you're making right now. I can't leave without saying. There's, this is the time that we could actually push on the national level from, from here in Durham. And so we've been having this conversation in the community with the 
with the uh, Housing Subcommittee of the Racial Equity, Com Racial Equity Task Force mm -hmm. and Bull City Tenants United, they were pushing for a tenant's bill of rights. And yeah. I've been pushing for a healthy homes um, kind of focus. Because of the food and everything? No, because of the because of the pest, because of the Oh because that? because of the the yeah. uh mold, the radar like all of the different things in your home that can make you unhealthy. We're talking about a healthy home healthy home. not having pests. Not food. Not you know, working out. Healthy homes. Not having, having roaches. Having good air quality. Having good air quality. Not having rats. Like, we can't even we can't even mandate that in this state because of our legislature right now. Wow. But what we can do is we can push to make sure that our current rules are at the max. Mm -hmm. And so that means bringing our minimum housing code up a little bit mm -hmm. as much as we can and then pushing at the state level and then if yeah. not pushing at the federal level. And that's another thing that I think people are, are a bit, I know we got to wrap it up, but yes. I think that's another thing people are ignorant on in terms of what power uh, you guys have when it comes to those types of things. Um, even when I did the work that I did, I was constantly getting reminded by Wib, Wib Gully, past Durham mayor. Yes. Uh, what I, what we couldn't legally, <laughs> we can't do that legally. Yes. Um, all the lawyers in the room. All the lawyers in the room. They'll yes. say, yep, no, we can't do that. Yeah. And we would have good intentions. We want to do something for Durham residents. No, I always have to remind up. them we can't do it yet. All it takes is a change in the law, the legislation. We can't do it yet that doesn't mean that we don't advocate for it doesn't mean that we don't press people for it i still say yeah you better go ahead and run for this office mm. um <laughs> <laughs> all right again thank you thank adrian you. i really appreciate you y'all thank you for tuning in to conversations again my name is tobias rose i have been meeting with one of the dopest city council women that i know um <laughs> and she's been killing the game since 2017 here in durham uh we'll Hopefully, likely, maybe, and I don't know the other candidates, so I'm sorry, but uh, she'll probably be doing this again next year, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> so, so anyway, thank you for tuning in to Conversations. Again, like us, subscribe, go on Spotify, go on Google Music. I want to see you on Apple Music. Subscribe on there, then tell your mama to do it. I want to hear you tell your daddy, your cousin, your auntie, your stepmama, your stepcousin, your stepbrother, all of them about Conversations. Please do it. That's but anyway, right. like us, comment, subscribe. See you everywhere. And uh, thank you. I'll see y'all next time. Oh. That's it? Yes. All right. Have a good one. Peace.